Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 8. I decided to knuckle down, and get started on that elusive main bus. This will involve completely redesigning the mini bus we built for the factories, which I was really not satisfied with. But I think the second attempt will be a bit more presentable. We will manage to push iron and steel onto it, and even a couple of bricks will make their way through it, to the construction parts factories. But that's not all we will do today. We will also continue upgrading our fleet of vehicles, and as a side project, we will start working on our mining operations a little more, since the iron and copper pits will require a wall to keep the sea from flooding in, which would be a little bit counterproductive. As for the coal, we will start digging a kind of rim around the pit, where we will eventually place the first level of retaining walls. Well, I think it's time to admit defeat when it comes to dirt. The problem is that the place where we are dumping it is pretty far away from the mines, so trucks assigned to that job are tied down way too long. We could help out a little by doubling our brick factories. Next, the sooner we get started on the coal mine rim, the faster we can start building the retaining walls. Technically, we could just start digging it out along the regular ground level or three, but I decided to be a bit more proactive, and I started the project at level one, which we started at the appropriate place on the mine's ramp leading into the pit. Also, I will not do this rim along the outer edges of the deposit. That is because I only have a vague idea where the actual edges are. The resource layers that show these deposits is a bit unreliable when it comes to judging these edges, so I decided to just dig around the existing pit, and then slowly start extending it until we find the actual border between the coal and the other surrounding materials. At that point, we can build the walls a bit more precisely. And as we approach the other end of the rim, I purposefully not connected it to the ramp. I only want to work on this from one side. Otherwise, the excavator task to do it will just go back and forth between the two ends, wasting a lot of time. Hmm, I wonder why the excavator told to focus on dirt isn't going up to get started. Ah, that's why. We had the designations on level minus one, instead of plus one. There. That should put the entire rim on the appropriate level. Okay my dude, you can get started anytime you want. Well, time to get started on the main bus. First, I wanted to get rid of the factory district bus. It will be in the way of the real thing. Next, we should use some way of marking down where we want the bus to run. I know I've seen this in another video, maybe from Neela us, I'm not sure. But it's a decent way to do it. We just set a strip of land with a leveling designation, and it will show up when we try to build something. Very good way of reminding ourselves where we shouldn't build anything and there is no avoiding it, some of the existing stuff is in the way. Fortunately for us, it is mostly things that are not permanent anyway. Like the smelting. Those are definitely going to be replaced, and in the near future too. Once we unlock the next level of smelting, complete with crushed ores, that's when I usually move these operations to someplace else. After placing the outline, I removed some of the places that were above the normal ground level, so we don't have any mining going on where we don't need it. Which did remind me to extend the leveling area near the coastline. It's still a bit bumpy, and we will need those lands in the future. So let's get started on that bus. It will be pretty standard. Just a couple conveyor belts running on the highest possible level, separated by a single tile, 
so we can use that space for branching off of the bus. The first commodity we put on it was the electronics. Basically, we will start by rebuilding the local bus, and then extend it to include other areas. To get the goods to their destination, I still use the method where we just route the incoming stuff over the outgoing line. Since we are going to the second warehouse, we are on level 2. The construction parts will use level 1. Since we are dealing with a delivery that is very much a local affair, we will not put this on the highest level on the bus, we will just route it below the electronics line. I suspect that we will need to add in a lot of these level 2 belts in the future, but for now, we just do this. Okay, that's the tier 2 construction part sorted. Also, it would be best if we use tier 2 belts wherever we can. Let's do tier 3 next. For now, we only bring in the previous level of parts, but later we will also do the steel. Since the level 2 height was occupied below the first line, we can just use the next lane. Next, how about we push the mechanical parts onto the bus? We can use the next lane, one tile away from the previous one. And since we have need for electronics in this direction, we can bring that line this way too. Let's start with the tier 1 lab equipment. and I think I just discovered an error. It seems I routed the wrong goods into the wrong warehouse. I only discovered this during editing, so we will need to deal with it in the next episode, but it's a pretty minor issue, we can just tell the warehouses to switch goods. Let's give the vehicle parts the same treatment, only this time, we route the parts one level higher, making sure we leave space for the iron belt that will come a bit later in the episode.
I also wanted to increase the rate at which we make vehicle parts, so we can upgrade our fleet with a bit more speed, so I gave both arrays two more factories. Obviously, we will use belts to move the parts between the two arrays in a second. And of course, we need a steady supply of glass, so let's trade for some. At this point, we are pretty much back to where we were, but with a slightly more presentable main bus setup. It's less chaotic than the last iteration. The problem with this coal mining job we started is that we can only tell the diggers to focus on a certain material. If the area we want to dig changes into something else, then the digger will likely move to some other place, which is suboptimal. Oh yeah. We also have tier 2 excavators now, in case it wasn't obvious. They can fill the tier 1 trucks with a single scoop, which is a huge boost to productivity. Speaking of mining, I wanted to get going with the retaining walls around the other mining operations. If we want to get every last ounce of iron from this place, we will need to have some way of keeping the sea out of the pit. And for that, we need to extend the shoreline just a little bit. Right now, the iron deposit ends on the beach, with nothing between it and the water. If we give ourselves a small buffer, then we can use that build the walls onto. Having access to this leveling designation is a pretty big help in this regard. We can just use the same tool to do both mining and dumping. Pretty great addition to the game. And that should do it for now. It's not the entire deposit of course, but we can deal with the rest of it at some other date. Let's not forget about the copper. It's the same exact idea. The deposit is right against the sea, so we need to build out some extra land to place the retaining walls. Let's go with that for now. Same as with the iron, we can extend the rest of the shore later. And it seems all the excavators in the coal mine are now level 2. We were just about managing with the old ones, but with these guys, we should be okay for quite a while. I also started to extend the rim a little bit. If I can see coal on the outer walls of the rim, then I know we can dig some more. With the coal vehicle sorted, how about we do the same for iron? We can also check on the towers to see if the upgrades are complete. If we can only see tier 2 vehicles assigned, we can rest easy. And why the hell not? 
let's do the copper too. Only did the diggers, I'll deal with the trucks later. Clicking on every individual vehicle was getting on my nerves a little bit. Wow, nice. Only 13% left on that oil deposit. We will soon start using the refinery at last. Okay, we don't really have any critically important technologies left to do in this tier, so I think we can put the next level of research labs in the front of the queue, so we can get it ready in advance. Next, let's route the Tier 1 vehicle parts over to the factories that will upgrade them to Tier 2. And before you ask, I have no idea why I didn't elevate this particular line. I have no excuse. The only saving grace that it only blocks access to a single array from only one side, so it's not really a huge error, but still, I need to do better. and let's not forget to keep exploring. We have so much left to discover. Nice, the earth wall is under construction. It will take a while to finish, but it's necessary. Now that the old oil distillery is running out, we could start using the refinery diesel. For now, I only put a couple trucks onto it, so they can deliver the fuel where it's needed, but of course, later we will use pipes for this. We can also upgrade the cargo dock. This will pretty much double the capacity and output. It will also magically make the cargo ship longer. I don't know when the apocalypse happened in this game, but self-upgrading cargo ships sound like some pretty high-tech stuff. And with four oil facilities, we can connect each of them to their own storage tanks. And as I've said in a previous episode, these storages are temporary, and will be replaced once we have the really big ones. I don't think we've seen this in this series yet. Let's watch an excavator go to the depot to be dismantled, and watch the new one roll out. I kind of wish we didn't have to wait for the old one to get back to the factory before the new one comes out. It is a bit of a waste of time to be honest. In case you are watching on a smaller screen, and cannot make out what that red alert says on the top right, don't worry. It just says that some of the harvest at the farms got lost due to lack of water we are still okay on food. Okay. I think it's time to push the bricks onto the main bus. The biggest limiting factor in getting rid of dirt now is the inability of our trucks to take the finished bricks over to the factories. If we use the bus, that won't be a problem anymore. That's one brickworks connected. 
We just need to hook the other one into the same line, and it's done. That should keep our factories going a bit more. I recorded this pretty much immediately after the last episode was finished, so whatever the problem is with the vehicle stability tracker, it's not fixed yet. Anyways, with the bricks on the main bus, we can do iron next. We have quite a few of the factories in need of it. And yes, I obviously noticed that big kink in the brick conveyor belt. We will fix that a little later in the episode. So far so good. That's the iron delivery sorted. To help with the traffic, maybe we should add in a small ramp over that belt. The trucks can drive under the level 2 belts, but excavators and other machinery cannot. It's one thing to have the mining vehicles upgraded, but the ones doing the regular jobs around the island also need the help, so we should set some of those to be upgraded too. Okay, we have a lot of stuff on the bus, but we are still missing some goods, steel being one of them. Nice, we just found a radar system on the map. That will help us scout out neighboring nodes, so we will know which one has potential enemies in them, so we can better prepare to meet them. And I think we suffered enough, time to fix that unseemly error in the brick belt. Oh, right. I was about to put steel on the bus, before I was distracted by that little battle. Hmm. I forgot to take the maintenance storages into consideration when building the bus. This is where having those alerts set up turned out to be extremely useful. We got notified before things got out of hand. Let's take care of the steel real quick, and then get on that right away.
I would like to give the maintenance setup a priority over anything else, and that will require the use of a belt balancer. We just need to place it into the main bus, before anything gets branched off, so we can tell the line to prioritize the critically important stuff. I suppose this little bend is a perfect place for this. It seems we need to be one tile farther away from the inlet port for a straight ramp down. We can just start from there to ensure we do it right. Now, we just need to tell the belt balancer to prioritize outputting iron plates in the direction of the maintenance depots, and only send more toward other stuff if that place is completely full. At this point, we can build the steel line. I just wanted to make sure we have enough construction parts to deal with the maintenance first. And it seems I was right to do that. We are struggling with tier 3 parts right now. Which is a bit concerning since we need steel to make those, and the line is not finished. No matter, once the belt backs up into the warehouse again, the trucks will take care of the deliveries until then. There was very little time left in the episode at this point, so I didn't really do anything big, but needless to say, we still need to put copper, rubber, and a couple other things onto the bus. And it seems our excavator managed to reach the sandy part of the job. This means we should stop digging sand at the beach for a little bit, so we can get rid of the one coming from the coal mine first. In the meantime, we also managed to unlock the next research tier. So how about we set that up before we put things to rest? Wait a second. Paper? That's new. Before the update, we had to supply the factory with liquid nitrogen canisters. It seems the recipe was changed. I noticed that one of the technologies we unlocked said something about paper, but I didn't look into that. I guess this is where we will need it. Great, something new to play with, which is always exciting. Obviously, Due to the lack of time, I didn't delve deeper into this new discovery, but I did notice that we also unlocked something called the shredder. On that, I saw that we can turn lumber into sawdust, which I bet we will need to make paper. But let's not worry about that now, that's for the next episode. Hmm, it seems the settlement is struggling to get enough water. As it turns out, it's because of the pipe. We use the level 1 version, which can only carry 60 units per minute, and we need more at this point. It will take some time for the health tracker to update, but it should be okay now. As for exploration, I was about to send the flagship out for another expedition but it's still being repaired after that big brawl with those two pirates. I considered the option of asking our trucks to remove some of the steel from the belt, and take it to the factory directly, but then I thought better of it. The source warehouse is already filling back up, so it's really unnecessary to do it. Anyways, 
I do believe that this is all we have time for. As I've said earlier, I recorded this episode pretty much immediately after the last one, so it is possible that by the time you get to see this one, the stability tracker will be fixed. Going by the Reddit consensus, it is likely that the tracker now also considers trucks working for mines and other buildings toward this overall stability. That can skew the results quite a bit. If we have 20 mining trucks idling around their tower, waiting to drop off their load, while the island-wide logistics are struggling, the tracker will show us stable, since we have a lot of trucks idling. That's a bit unhelpful, and I sincerely hope it gets fixed. But, as I've said, it might already be fixed by the time this episode goes live. But hey, at least it forced us to get started on the main bus, so I guess it was a blessing in disguise. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. If you are more in the donating mood, you can find a link to my Kofi page in the description, where you can buy me a glass of water. I don't really drink coffee. Thank you for your support, and until next time, I will see you later.